North Carolina. Um, I give an honor to the shepherds of this house, Bishop and First Lady Leg McClendon. Um, I give an honor to um, everyone on the sound of my voice, all the prophets, deaconess, evangelists, everyone that's on my voice. Um, it's an honor this morning to give, uh, to introduce someone who's very dear to me. Um, he's a friend, he's my lover, he's my, um, my protector, he's all those things, he's my husband. We've been married for 17 years. We have one daughter, Artasia, she's 14. Um, I'm trying to be nice when I say <laughs> I hear people always clown each other, but um, I have watched this man grow. Um, when he first started his journey, he was, um, they call him the jokester, preach, uh, joke, jokester um, preacher. He always had jokes, he had me laughing, but God changed that, he went to more <laughs> teaching and most people didn't like that. They always thought of him as the, the joking type. But now God had mixed it so I just ask that you just sit back. Don't judge him by his appearance. Don't judge just open your mind up to what God has to say. Um, he he reads the word, he's a teacher. Um, he does he owns his own business. It's a fake business. It's called Bellamy Small Services and um, the scripture he used and he put it on his his trucks or whatever is Proverbs 3 and 6. And knowledge God in all thy ways. And he will direct your path. And that is, he is a testimony of that scripture. You know, um, he just was, a, he's adopted. And he just found his family for over 30 some years. So, you know, we are just blessed. And we just praise God. We thank him. I mean, he's just awesome God. Um, like I said, don't just look to him, you know, just be receptive of what the word has, and I know God has a word for you. And I'm looking, I'm coming with great expectations, I'm coming to learn, I'm coming to get fed, I come to do all that, and fellowship with my brothers and sisters. Amen. So I ask you to point your hands to him, and say, God bless, God, bless. God, use. God use, your man serving, your man serving. In, a mighty in a mighty way. And I present to you and introduce some to others, Elder Jonathan J. Bellamy. Amen. Bishop Tim Thompson. <laughs> that is his new family um, last name. <laughs> Yo, come on, keep keep clapping those hands for the Lord. I'm gonna go ahead and set something straight real quick. So. My big sister would know geographically where we're located. <laughs> the correct town is Shalot, North Carolina. Shalot, that's right, not Charlotte. A lot of people get it confused. I have people let this call me. Say, are you in Charlotte? I said, I told you who I was. Don't question me where I stayed. So if you live there for Jake, Jonathan Bellamy and Charlotte, you ain't talking to me. I hang up on them. <laughs> First off, I want to give an honor to God who's the head of my life. My, path, my, my Lord and Savior is Jesus the Christ, the precious Holy Ghost. Yes. My pastor for allowing me to be able to come down and fellowship and be with our family down here in Georgia, Apostle Anthony Richburg. And First Lady Richburg of Salvation and Deliverance Family Worship Center, North Carolina. Family Worship Center out of Leland, North Carolina. Amen. I give honor to my big brother. We go back many years. Yes. You know, God sent people in your life when, when you truly need them. And at the time, I truly needed somebody that would encourage me in ministry when I didn't even know I was going to end up in ministry. Somebody to look over me. And, 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 and help me with my spiritual walk when God was preparing me and didn't even know it. And that's my big brother behind me, uh, Bishop Derek McClendon. I give honor to his wife. She, she, she didn't hesitate to take us in. Lady Alec McClendon, Elder Bannister, 
everybody in respective places under my voice and Evangelist Briggs, God bless you, man of God. It's an honor to meet you. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And to my sister, she she be so excited when we come down. It's an honor to be able to come give a word on your day. Minister in training, Candace Bridges. Amen. Amen. To be young and want to be hungry for God and want to work for God. That's right. It's hard and it's very rare to find. And if somebody as dedicated as she is, that's a rare gem. Amen. So you want, you're definitely in the right place at the right time. Yes. I'm not going to prolong, prolong you long. If you have your word, please go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to start at the 6th through the 13th verse. And while you're looking for it, just a little bit, the book of Samuel. Um, the author was Samuel, Nathan, and Jeremiah, some say. The timeline was 1100 B.C. through 960 B.C. It's divided into two books. 1 Samuel's 31 chapters had 810 verses. 2 Samuel's 24 chapters, 695 verses. It's one of nine historical books. It covers the reigns of the last, the last of the judges, the careers of Eli and Samuel, and the first two kings, which was Saul and David. Let's go to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. Father God, we come to take you. Thank you right now, God. Yeah. God, we just ask that you just send us a word, God. Use me, God. Move me out the way, God. Just use me as an instrument, God. Let the words I speak come from you and not from me, God. Yes. God, please let your word not fall on deaf ears, God. God, we just thank you right now for this day, God, that we sing, God, and we'll never see it again, God. God, just bless everyone that's in our presence. God, everyone that's praying for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't know the custom of this house, but with me, if you can, if you're able to, please stand for the word of God. And we're going to start at 6, verse, chapter 16. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked at Eli and said, Surely, the Lord's anointing is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on, on, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man see. Repeat that one more time. For the Lord seeth not as man see. For man looking on the outward appearance, but the Lord looking on the heart. Then Jesus called, I mean, excuse me, then Jesse called him. Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen him. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are all thy children? Are here all thy children? And he said, There remain yet the youngest, and behold, he keep up the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. We're going to start right there. Amen. For a title, I would like to use Wait a Little Longer. Amen. When God gives us an assignment, we can develop many singles about it. We try to find a reason why we shouldn't go. It's amazing because when the assignment comes, it's always at the wrong time in our book because it seems we're currently in a battle or a journey. We get to the point where we think that God wants us to be, but when we get there, if it's not what we want or expect it, we begin to not understand. We seem to feel a little disappointed, a little defeated. We seem to get confused because the answer has yet to arrive. We begin to quote scriptures such as, Lord, you said, if I walk by faith and not by sight, 
Lord, if I acknowledge you in all my ways, you shall direct my path. But Lord, I'm still lost. I felt I've done as you told me to do. Uh -huh. I fasted. I've prayed. I've given my sacrificial offering. But yet, even with the assignment you have given me, I still don't see the answer. I'm in the place where you've told me to be, but God, I'm still confused. I can't shout no more. I can't dance no more. I can't run no more. In my Lord, in my eyes, Lord, my worship has become still. What else can I do? I'm here, Lord. I've done as you told me, but everything that's been presented to you is not the answer. It's meeting my expectation, but it's not meeting yours. Why God? Why God? Because as God told Samuel, we don't see as God see, we want the answer to be microwave quick. We want the answer to be instant. We want and easy so we can get back to our everyday normal life. Now here's the question. Is it possible that you are at the right place? But could it be that the people that is in your presence is hindering you from completing your assignment? Sometimes people don't only want, don't only want you not to see, but they want the people that you connected to not to see. We must be able to look at our present situation sometimes and have a conversation with God and ourselves and just be patient for a little while longer. Psalm 46 and 10, we just need to be still and know that he is God. When my wife got up, she taught Bible school this morning, she repeated that same scripture. When I was coming down the road yesterday, I was thinking, because first I wanted to come on a sermon about preaching about servitude, about preaching about being a servant. I wanted to talk about what it is to serve in the army of the Lord. But God says, no, 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 no. The sermon that I've given you, the talk I have with you at the beginning of the week, that is the word for the house. It's about patience, waiting. When we want things to come, we want them right now. We want them quick. We want them to the point, we want to always stay in season, but we don't never want to step out of season. We just always want to just be able to just go up and open up. Don't even want to turn the knob, just be able to pull the door without no setbacks, without nothing to hinder us for getting to the next level. Sometimes we get so, so set in our ways that we forget that we actually still have to work spiritually. We sit up there, we collect our blessings and we get everything and we get happy because God is blessing us. But yet we fail to forget that it is still work to do. We sit there and, and we get upset and be like, why God, why? You were blessing me then, why not now? Because he got you to the point where you needed to be. But when you go to the next step, sometimes you just got to wait a little bit longer to get there. When we were here this morning in the Sunday school, I told Elder Bannister that I was ready for my wife to get to the next level. Because as we as I push, she push. And as she push, I push. So we always seem to have to be on the same level. So when she wouldn't go and accept her call, I got upset. I got upset, Bishop. I started getting mad, getting, we were arguing, and I was telling her, that is where you need to be. But then the Lord dealt with it. So we're gonna come on, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna talk about the text for a few minutes and I'm gonna get out your way. Here we have Samuel sitting around mourning for Saul. God tells him he's been rejected. As he's rejected Saul as king and tells him to go to Jesse the Bethlehemite. The next king is among his sons. Sometimes we just gotta stop wasting unnecessary, unnecessary time on people. Sometimes we just gotta quit putting our energy into people. Some people are only going to want to do what they want to do. They don't feel like that they should have to please God. They feel like they should have to maybe please God 75% of the way. When God sends an assignment, he tells you how to do it, how he wants it done, and exactly when it needs to be done. But see, with Saul, he didn't do that. He wanted to shine. 
He wanted to, what's that, y'all young kids, what's that new word? He wanted to get clout. He wanted to do anything for clout. He wanted to do anything for the people. Evangelist, I was the same way. Evangelist, I was the same way. I had to go to my daughter. I said, I had to get her to break this down to me like it was scripture. What is clout? <laughs> had to pure go look it up on the internet, the urbandictionary.com, and they gave me the, gave me the, uh, 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 the, the definition. Popular. Popular. Many tell me been out of school almost 21 years. They too, they, they, they don't even want to say a seven letter word, they want to cut it back to five. Clout. <laughs> That's right. God tells Samuel, go and gather Jesse and all his sons and make a sacrifice. Samuel does as God asks him to do. Samuel looks at his first son looks at the first son based on the appearance alone. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing. Just because when we get there and God tells us something, we think when we see the first thing, that's truly the answer. No. Mm -hmm. somebody, somebody catch that to me. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that comes first is not always the answer. If that's the case, that's right. Adam, would have, Adam would have gotten it right there would not have been no need for Noah or Moses. Everything would have been fine in the Garden of Eden. He said, you ask Jesse, are all our children present? Jesse said, it is one that remains, and he beholds, and he keeps the sheep. Said, so tells Jesse, sin and fetch him, but we will not sit down until he comes. Sometimes we just have to wait a little while longer. While we wait, we must do as it says in Romans 12 and 12. Rejoice in the hope, patient in tribulation, continue in instant prayer. Okay. If God said it was going to be there, it's going to be there. You may not see it when you arrive, but just be patient. It's on the way, and he sent and bought him, and he sent, and he, they bought David in. He was running. He was beautiful in the countenance, and he was good to look at. The Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel then rose up and went to Ramham. See, Samuel didn't get bit out of shape. That's our problem. We get upset to when we get to a point where God wants us to be. And so when we get there, and if the answer's not there, we always got the second guess. Ask y'all a question, serious question. How many of y'all have ever seen somebody walk up to a door, it's locked. They know it's locked, they still pull one. That person will stand right there, waiting. Now, how many times after that, y'all will sit in y'all car because you know the door is locked and watch the other person tell the other person the door is locked and the other person will walk up there and pull on it. <laughs> That's how we are with God. God, I tell you, do not go down that road. He told Samuel, I have one that I have already chosen. This is my issue with Samuel. All seven went through. Now the number seven means completion. So if I could question Samuel was, why would you let them come back in front of you again if God never spoke to you when they went through in front of you the first time? This can't be the answer. God does things what he wants and how he wants. It's not on your time, it's what Bishop says, on his time, because God is time. Yes. Right then and there, when the seven went by, 
That's all the back of my sandwich just said. Is there anyone else? But no, we want to do it our way. As we said this morning in Sunday School Evangelist Belt, we want to do it our way. You know somewhere in that conversation of the boys walking through there, that they need to, somebody said, well, let's run them back through again. If it didn't work the first time, what makes you think it's going to work the second time? That's what we like to do. We like to try to do it our way. Our way. And so Samuel sitting up there messing with Jesse, and instead of asking if there was any more kids, he wasted his whole, he wasted his time. Just like the children of Israel walking around. If they would have did as Moses said, it wouldn't have took them 40 years to go four miles. The simple fact of the matter that he sat there and he waited, I'm pretty sure it drove him crazy to find out what was going on with the whole situation. Because see, church, sometimes God tells us this is how I want the situation to answer. But the one thing I give saying across was he was patient. Yeah. He waited and not only did the answer come, but God also gave several instructions how to handle the situation. Amen. Church, sometimes God must put a delay on the assignment because he must say the same. Yes. We have to stay focused because God may want to bless you in front of your naysayers. Mm -hmm. God may not only want to set the table in front of your enemies, but he also might want to feed you in front of your enemies. The bottom line is, my God, he's a deliverer God. Yes. He is my Jehovah Jireh. Yes. He is my Jehovah Shammah. Yes. Because he will always be there. All you got to do is wait and be patient. It's time we give God the respect that he gave us when we was out in the world. And the thing about what's funny is about it, Bishop, when we started coming up here three, four years ago, I remember what this place looked like. I remember how it was. It's not an it's, 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 it's not accident that y'all remain when everything else failed. See, the one thing we forget is we look, sometimes we look at numbers, but if you ever look at the Bible, a lot of times the bigger number didn't win. It was the smaller number. And see, with being the fact that y'all are small in numbers and stature, it's amazing how everything is being touched and built up, but y'all have yet to be touched. See, that's what happens when the anointing comes in a place. That's what happens when you have the hand of God among you. No matter how what size building you got, or how many people is within the building, if God said it, if it's for you, it's for you. And it's and I, I can remember coming up and talking, and, and you telling me about everything that you went through with the witches and the warlocks. But see, here's the thing: God had to set an example to show people out there that you weren't gonna be one to back down. This is a deliverance ministry. Deliverance. Now the key word about deliverer is, it means this is how we're going to be delivered in the house, or it's going to get delivered out the house. And when God came through and he moved and he started pushing things out, see he had to clear the path for situations and for people. Because we'll be too busy focusing on those things and focusing on situations that we got no, got no business being dealing with. And when we deal with those situations and and, as, and, 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 and it, it confuses us and it bothers us, it corrupts our minds and it stops us from being able to move forward. And if we can't move forward, we can't focus on the things that we're truly supposed to be focusing on. So if you're in constant battle with everything that the enemy is coming and storing at you, sometimes you just have to release some stuff and let God handle it and work on the things that is truly meant to be worked on. Me and my wife, we were talking the other day. She said, well, she, 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 she asked me one time, she said, how do you deal with situations and people? Mm. I said, it's a small passage in, passage in Exodus, the evangelist, that taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. When the Lord went to Moses and told him to go back to Egypt, I paid attention who he sent with him. Right. He sent his wife and his children. When it's time for you to go on assignment, only those that matter will go with you. Right. You just have to be patient and wait a little longer. 
and talk to God and get involved in what he wants him to have. But if you be patient, it'll be amazing what you can get on the backside. It'll be it's amazing what blessings you can receive. I got to the point, it took me 15 years to find my family. But it's between that of looking and defining what was in the middle, I was being obedient to God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You want to unlock a blessing? Be obedient. You want God to answer a prayer? Be obedient. We could have simply just stayed up in Leland today, went to church, did everything. We got the phone call. I said, give me one of them. I said, give me a few days and I'll be there. It's important to be obedient. Part of your training is learning obedience. The problem is today we want to put people in places and they won't even be obedient to you, but we want to elevate them through the system. Oh yeah, the spiritual side has a system too. If you don't believe, look at it. You ever looked at a church that doesn't barely grow? They have the same people in it. You have people coming in and out. I'm not talking about a church that's small in stature. Because a church as small such as this one is, they got workers in here. You have to prove yourself. This is a proven church. I've seen, I've seen people come and I've seen people go and I stay six hours on the road. But the thing about it is you don't have to naturally be here to spiritually be here to help deal with the battles and the wars. Sometimes you just got to wait a little while longer. Sometimes you just got to stay in prayer. Sometimes you just got to walk that walk. Sometimes you just got to fight the good fight. Sometimes the way you might want to handle it might not be the way that had needs to be handled. You have to learn how to listen to God and let God fight your battles. You quit to quote it to somebody else, but do you, you receive it? Marvin Sapps got a song that said, this is not the time or the place. And sometimes he could just be talking about you and yourself and your walk with God. Telling you, it's amazing. I received a word from the, from my my overseer, my apostle, my spiritual father last week, and the word that he gave me. To be honest with you, I did not want nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. But I know from where I'm going at and where I'm heading at, I had to accept it. It's time out to be playing with God. If you have a calling on your life, get in it. If, you, if God wants you to do something, do it. You're doing more damage to yourself by trying to fight God instead of moving with God. I'm a witness. My wife is a witness. When you move with him, doors will open. Things will come. Our marriage was on. When I met Bishop McClendon, I'm being transparent. I was in Brunswick, Georgia, ready to get divorced, ready to set up my child support. But my wife, being obedient, that was embarrassed. Amen. She said she did not want her marriage to end like that. Right. And at that time, she went in prayer. I could truly say somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. I'm so glad that Advances Bellamy prayed for me. Because if she would me, it ain't no telling why I'll be at. Bishop, I'm finished, but I, I need to do one thing if it's okay with you. Elect lady and my wife, will y'all please come forward? Elder Master, you, you were talking to us last night. And you told me and my wife something. 
And the Lord, he laid it upon my heart to have these ladies anoint and pray for your eyes. Because your vision is great. He just want to get your natural back the way your spiritual is. That's all it was. 